It's been a little over a year since we last had a conversation surrounding the state of PlayStation Plus, so I figured we'd do that now, and since that last conversation, a lot has changed. Uh, we have PS5 here now, and there has been some changes to reflect a new hardware launch. But also, uh, you know, we've got PlayStation Now that's just kind of sitting there. So let's really go over Sony's services. Are people happy with it? You know, what Sony will possibly do moving forward? And um, is this really going in a better direction? Potentially, but there are still some concerns there. I think to better understand where these services might be in the future, it's really important that we review just how well Sony's doing currently, and they are at their absolute peak with uh, just software services, uh, revenue, profits, they're doing incredibly well. It may not seem like that from your point of view, certainly with some of the negative press we've been seeing lately, right, where people can't even buy a PS5, whether it's from just overall shortage of stock or the scalping situation that's been happening. Now, granted, that's a small amount of units that are being scalped and resold, but still, it's abundant left and right. You've also got the DualSense drift issue, but PlayStation 5 uh, undoubtedly is a console that's still in incredibly hot demand. And once you have this machine, you may be inclined to subscribe to one or both of Sony's services that they currently offer, which is PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. But you know, the great thing here is that we recently had Sony's Q3 fiscal year report for 2020, and that also, that also completed the full 2020 fiscal year. So we have a really nice uh, bird's eye view of how well Sony really is doing with PlayStation hardware. And for a brand new platform launch, this is generally where the company will take some expected losses, but that was not the case here. In fact, despite a brand new platform launch, this was record breaking left and right. And so for something like their overall revenue for just the last quarter, it was $8.45 billion. That was a new record for the entire games industry just in that quarter. During that new hardware launch, they reported $3.33 billion in profit. PSN, the topic we're really going over here, reached a new record of revenue, making $5.06 billion. Software and services also reached a new record of $5.54 billion in revenue, and that's just the last quarter. 2020 in total was record-breaking left and right for revenue, profit, it really is incredible across the board and for the thing that we're really zeroed in on here playstation plus uh, a new peak of subscriber numbers 47.4 million playstation now we don't have any confirmed numbers our last one really was 2.2 million i think that was in may of last year but uh over 80 percent of ps5 owners have playstation plus and that's largely due to the playstation plus collection which we'll talk about and um you know that's the thing we've got sony at their absolute peak with these services so even if maybe you're on the end of not being happy with them. Uh, generally speaking, most people are happy with these services. And uh, that's even shown in our thumbnail with the like and dislike bar, right? That's kind of what we've been doing here before. It's not easy to have these conversations saying, oh yeah, everybody's happy with PS Plus right now, especially because it's sometimes an echo chamber of uh, so many people being vocal about you know, how the month isn't good for them, right? So this happens a lot with the instant game collection when it gets announced. Oh, uh, you know, I bought these games recently or, you know, I, I don't care for this title or uh, they're giving away, you know, these B tier games or something like that. But for the most part, that really has not been happening. For some reason, uh, Sony really doesn't bother putting up an official PS Plus video on their main channel anymore. But the um, screenshots I've been showing is from PlayStation Access, where they do the, the monthly video. Also, the independent channel PlayStation Grenade, that's a high-volume trafficked video where that can just give us a nice view of, hey, so a lot of people are saying I like or dislike this month's games. And so it is, it is larger games. It is, you know, more games because we do have PlayStation 5 here as well. This is something that we easily predicted over a year ago. Once we have PS5 here, where the console inherently is backwards compatible, once you are on board with PS5, you'll be able to claim you know three sometimes four games every single month and that's really a great offer of course because it's all playable on one machine versus say when we were in a world of ps vita ps3 and ps4 yeah there were six games on offer but it was um a little bit more disjointed you had to be a really engaged customer to claim all those games but you know recently we've gotten things like well of course this current month final fantasy 7 remake farpoint maquette remnant from the ashes february was control ultimate edition concrete genie destruction all-stars which we know initially was going to be sold at 70 bucks going free 
Maneater, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Greedfall, and we've got new game, de uh, new game debuts being very recent now and uh, much more prominent. So things like Bug Snacks, uh, again, we mentioned Destruction All-Stars, Oddworld Soulstorm is coming next month, actually. That's a brand new game debut. Even if you don't care about it, it's still there. It's a brand new game. Uh, we had Fall Guys. That was a little while ago, but we all know how popular and what a good get that was for PlayStation Plus subscribers. So clearly they're doing something right. Sony's at their absolute best and even customers are really happy. And that's not something that we could have always said regarding the history of the service. But that's also accounting for the fact that right now, uh, you know, they've still been fairly conservative in their additions. They've made some great changes, but it's still, there's still limitations at play here, like the Plus Collection where you can only claim that through a PS5 console, or the monthly games only being available, some games being PS5 versions only, or this month, like Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's a fantastic game, but you're not getting that free upgrade to the Integrate Edition, um, which some people are getting this a little bit confused here. If you paid for the game in some way, shape, or form, you're getting a free upgrade. If you've never played the game and you want to download the the plus version that's great but you're not going to get the integrated edition through only your ps plus license that's where they're kind of stopping you there and square is a third-party publisher so we know that if sony wanted to make it so that that upgrade was available for everybody they could have foot the bill for that but they're not going to and that's kind of the crux of the issue here and why we, we've explained so much up to this point because there needs to be financial incentive what is pushing sony if they're if they're already doing so well with playstation plus to begin with and breaking record profits and revenue left and right and the demand for ps5 is so high this is where i would venture a guess that the playstation plus collection is a pilot program internally to understand how often they can turn turn non-subscribers into, into subscribers on their new hardware. This is why they're not really talking too much about, you know, how long the Plus Collection is going to be sticking around, if they're going to add more games to it, if it will eventually expire. They're not being forward on what is going to happen with it, probably because they're just letting it sit there and looking at the numbers to see what the conversion rate actually is, right? So as they sell more and more PS5s and we kind of exit out of this early adopter era, because let's face it, People that buy PS5s right now, they're going to be very highly engaged consumers. They're going to be more willing to spend more money on PlayStation 5. Uh, and it's likely that they will be subscribers. That's why about 87% of uh, PS5 owners already have a Plus membership. So I would venture a guess that that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes to understand if we give away 20 high caliber, high volume, you know, fantastic PS4 titles, genre defining PS4 games, you know, is this something that we can you know, add more to, is it financially worth it, right? Sony is still um, conservative in this regard, right? So when, whenever we talk about something like Xbox Game Pass, we know that Sony's not going to go that route right now, at least of day and date, high budget releases for their first party games. They've been very forward about this. They're multi-million dollar projects. They're just not going to do it. They've even gone to a point where their first party games are going up to a higher price tag. Sony's one of the few publishers that are saying, yes, $70 games. So there needs to be some financial incentive for Sony to get aggressive in some of these areas. And, you know, the requirement for online play uh, with PlayStation Plus, we all know that's not going anywhere. So I know that's something that people like to shout and scream about right away. But quite frankly, we all know that's not going anywhere. So it's really a matter of making it worth it. And uh, if anything, you can sort of move that requirement somewhere else. This is where I'm still somewhat confused as to why PlayStation Now is just sitting there not doing much of anything. So if we're not going to get day and date releases with, you know, big budget uh, games, if you're not going to go the route of trying to court, you know, EA Play on there because we can see that Microsoft has done that, why not make it so PlayStation Now can give you that PS, uh, that online play benefit like PS Plus, right? Which funnily enough, there is the, there is no requirement to have PlayStation Plus if you're playing just PS Now games. So everything in PlayStation Now, you can play online for free. However, if you buy a game outside of PS Now and uh, you want to play online, then you have to have a Plus membership. I don't know why PS Now doesn't just cover everything and uh, Sony lets that Sony lets the consumer, you know, pick or choose between these these memberships. Uh, I think over time you could see people move over to PS Now and they can sort of consolidate the services at that point. And that's what's so confusing when you have Plus Collection, Plus, monthly games, 
uh, PS Now, then you've got all this crossover. Some PS Now games are available on Plus, some Plus games go to Now, then people that are subscribed to both of them kind of lose out. And that's also what's very frustrating, right? So they've made great changes, but at the same time, they really, you know, have still had a lot of these weird um, situations where it's like, why are you still doing this? You know, game prices are going up. When they're doing so well already, you have to wonder, do they even have the financial incentive when they're already doing so well? And the thing you have to remember about the the relationship of huge multi-billion dollar corporation versus consumer, I almost like to akin it to um, the transaction that you'll have at your you know, local car dealer, right? Um, you want to, as a consumer, you want to feel like you got a good deal, but at the same time, the dealer has to stay in business. But the dealer can sometimes have these awful, insidious, um, you know, uh, questionable behaviors to try and extract the most amount of money out of the customer. And uh, this is where the best transaction at play is when the customer walks away feeling that, like they got a good deal and the dealership still made a little bit of money. Um, it's a fine line that <laughs> so many businesses do not understand how to walk it properly. But considering they just had their best month and their best quarter, I'm just not sure how much financial incentive is there for them to get really aggressive with these services or make some very reactionary changes based on what's happening around them. Um, you know, PS5 is still a brand new machine and there's a lot that's going to change naturally and I'm sure they have a lot of plans behind the scenes, but I've been predicting for a while that there needs to be some sort of service shakeup and it just hasn't really happened. It's just, you know, additive on top of what we have been used to for so long and that's fine, but at some point I'd like to see some dramatic changes. I don't really know if that's going to happen, but you know, as always, we will play the wait and see game here on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.